Hello and welcome. Today I'll try my best to show you how to install a longitudinal power feed onto a bridge port style vertical mill. As a disclaimer, this video is not supported or has any affiliation with any manufacturer, distributor or seller. I simply go through and document my progress one step at a time. Maybe it'll help someone like me out there. In the box we find instruction manual which is printed on a pretty good, nice thick paper. The cast aluminum power feed mounting bracket. Brass bevel gear, pre-greased and dust capped. End of travel switch stops. Some precision ground sleeves and set of shims. And of course, ta-da! The power feed unit itself. They weren't greedy with plastic wrap. Aha! I see one corner cut by the manufacturer. This driving gear is only supported at the motor clutch assembly side and not at the outer end of the shaft. Oh well, the old wisdom stands true, you get what you pay for. I hope I paid enough to see some action down the road. The unit weighs whopping almost 9 pounds and feels pretty decent in the hand. The installation begins with removal of the right side handle, graduated dial wheel, and the original bearing housing plate. I am being very careful, trying not to break anything else. What did you break already, you'll ask? Oh boy, I couldn't even begin to tell you. This side of the table has a ball bearing that is simply a radial support of the feeding screw. All axial loads are handled by the thrust bearing which is hiding on the other side of the table. This new bracket doesn't have rolled alignment pins, so I will be relying heavily on my eyeballing and some other sensory system to assess the alignment of the mechanism. But for now, I keep mounting bolts loose. Next, the instruction calls for power feed to be attached to the bracket. And after that, the sleeve. Kind of backwards if you ask me. So, of course, it didn't go on the screw and I had to remove the assembly in order for it to fit. After some initial testing, I discovered that step shoulder of the feed screw was rubbing against the outer race of the needle bearing. This needs to be addressed. It's not every day I get to use my hydraulic press and when I do, I'm very happy I got it long time ago. The needle bearing was moved about a couple of millimeters outwards. And so the bracket goes on for the third time. After the proper radial support of the feed screw was established, it is time to properly shim the bevel gear, for if it's smashed against or is too far from the driving gear. It would lead to excessive wear and premature failure of gears 
and possibly bearings of the unit. Proper combination of supplied shims needs to be used so that when pressed against the bevel gear it doesn't feel like teeth binding or there is too much play. After that, shimming of the graduated wheel takes place. I used one of the supplied shims as a feeler gauge to look fancy. Did it work? Probably not. This kit doesn't include a new clutched handle which can disengage and slip when not used. The original keyed handle goes back on the machine and is secured with new supplied nut. It looks like it should work. Next, the end travel switch is installed in place of the hard stop in the center of the saddle. It comes with dust cover to protect it from shavings and coolant sprayed. The cover allows for the switch to be activated by these stiff spring-loaded end stops. First test run looks and sounds satisfactory. The end switch functions, everything looks great. Except, when reversed, the speed changes. I employed my superpower of observation and found that the speed dial is touching the direction handle and moves with it. The dial was moved and problem disappeared. If you saw something interesting today, give this video a thumbs up. If there was something you didn't like, let me know in the comment section below so I can improve. Please help this channel grow by subscribing and sharing. Please also consider supporting me, links are in the description. Thanks for watching and have a great day!